move on to our lead hook today. I'm an orthodox fighter, so my lead hook is going to be my left hook. If you're a southpaw, uh, your lead hook will be your right hook. So let's start with our foot position when discussing the hook. And it's always important to make sure we start with our feet because good power in our punches happens with our feet. So when throwing the hook, we're going to start with our foot position, making sure we're in our good stance, which comes from episode one. We're going to be in a more of our defensive 50-50 stance when throwing the hook. The first thing we're looking at the hook is you can throw it with a step. You can step into your hook or you can throw it stationary. In kickboxing, a lot of times the left hook sets up the right kick. So that's why I'll step with my hook, lengthen my stance, and this gives me the option to kick. So from a side view, I'll step with my hook in order to lengthen my stance, in order to get more power in my kick. Or if I'm staying stationary, I can um, step. That's more of my inside boxing. So both for the basic jab, and I want you to remember I'm teaching the basic left hook. I'm, as the series progresses, I'll teach variations to the left hook. But this is your basic setup for the left hook. I'm going to teach it with a step right now. So as we step, okay, we have two options. I'm going to talk about a setup hook versus more of a power hook. So the clean uh, first hook, which is more of a stationary, not loaded hook, uh, we're going to discuss stepping, so we're pushing off our rear calf and we're going to be throwing the hook. The key to the hook now is the hip and the shoulder. We want to make sure our hip and our shoulder turn in order to get more power into the hook. So think about pushing your hip to the side and getting your lead shoulder over and protecting your shin. So throwing my elbow, bang. Throwing my elbow, bang. Now, once you throw the hip and the shoulder into it, we're going to discuss the pivot. And the biggest difference I see is the boxers, I'm going to call it a boxer hook versus a kickboxing hook. Boxers really like to pivot a lot on their hook, which I call it the low kicker's dream. So if I'm fighting someone and they're constantly turning their, their heel out for the hook, that's perfect for me to time my low kicks. So in kickboxing, we like to keep our foot a little bit more uh, pointing forward. So when I throw my hook, bang, I'm keeping my foot pointed, again, lengthening my stance and it puts me in a good position to kick. Where the boxing style will hook a little bit. It's not wrong to hook, each have a different purpose. If I'm inside, I sometimes will turn a little bit to get that little bit of extra drive in my hip and my shoulder. I'll slightly pivot, but I'm never over pivoting my lead foot. So from there, again, I talked about throwing the elbow. So when you're in here, you got to think about throwing your elbow. This way the hand will follow. More from a side profile. So this is more of my setup hook. Um, now we're going to discuss a power hook. Last episode we discussed the right hand. And a lot of times we throw the right hand, we throw our shoulder in front which loads up our power left hand. So I could mix it with a right hand, boom, left hook. This is loading it up. Or I can add the right as a feint, boom, transfer the weight on my front foot and be able to torque and throw my body into the power and get the punch. So we're loading up with the right shoulder. So we, our setup versus power load up, both work. Depends on what you're doing. So the other thing I'm going to discuss is the thumb position. A lot of people like to throw thumb, um, you know, pointing towards you. I'm one of the people who like to throw thumb up. I find I get more power with it. But you have to manipulate your hand at the end of the day in order to find openings. A lot of people say as you go of a, through a longer hook, you want to almost go thumb down because it, it builds through the defensive uh, hole that's open there if you find your thumb position. More inside hooking is nice to have thumb up. I find I get good drive and more mid hooks maybe throw thumb down. But it all depends finding openings. You need to use your hook uh, very laser-like. 
The last thing I'm going to talk about before I get into different drills and different pads to hit, um, I want to just discuss the flight path. And you can change your flight path based on how you extend your elbow. So if I'm in here, I'm throwing a short hook, my elbow stays tighter to my body. If I want to throw a long hook, I just loosen up my elbow so I have different options to throw. The last thing about flight path is I can hit and pull right back. If I'm throwing multiple hooks, I like to hit and return in a more circular motion like I'm stirring a pot. So if you're stirring a big pot and you want to throw multiple hooks, it allows you to rotate. I'm going to show you some of the drills on the bag and some common mistakes. So one of the easiest ways to work your left hook or your lead hook on the bag is using a stationary target. And you're going to notice as the series progresses, I love using stationary objects because it allows you to get the most power. So I'm going to use my wall pad here. And I'm not going to line up. Right now I'm in center line. If I'm in center line, it doesn't fully allow me to get my full power through the hook because my hook is being stopped. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move to the left this way more of almost where my shoulder is in line with the, with the bag target um, or the target. So from here, I have the option now to really throw my hook through the target. And this will really teach me to really turn my shoulder, my hip, and rotate to get power. I'm going to start off with more of that quick hook, and then I'm going to do that load up hook where I'm transferring weight on my front foot and then torquing and really getting power in my hip and my shoulder. So here's the different variations. Um, staying to the side of the bag, allowing for rotation. The load up hook. Now once you get more advanced, that's a single power drill. Once you get advanced, I like to bang out multiple hooks um, because it's one of my strongest weapons. I can change levels with it. I can go two to the head, one to the body. Constantly change up the levels of your hook. So here's Matt just working the quick hook. Uh, he's a southpaw, so he's using his right hook. And here he's using his single hook. This is more the basic way, and I can tell Matt now to double or triple up his hook. Now Matt, you see Matt really using the jab as a range finder. And using a jab is a good weapon to set up your hook. So now Matt's going to use his jab. He's going to feint with his left hand and load up his power shot. So you can see him throwing his left shoulder. And this way he's getting more rotation in his right hook and he gets more power. That right the left feint actually allows him to put more weight on his front foot, which allows him to get more power in the hook. You can even get him, instead of a feint, to throw a cross hook. This will make this a little bit more advanced. And again, he's finding his range with his jab, mixing in the hook, and his straights, and his power shots. All right, now we have Troy on the long bag. He's using his more of his quick hook, and then he's going to mix in his power hook. So you can see him really loading up on that power hook. So to make this drill now for my intermediate followers and more advanced followers, um, especially my kickboxers who are watching, the left hook really sets up the right low kick really well. So let's see Troy really set up his left hook and mix in his right low kick. Very simple drill. Now just for more strategy's sake, Troy's going to use a hook cross and then he's going to change a hook low kick. So he's going to mix in his follow-ups after the left hook. There's the hook cross, hook low kick. So he's constantly changing what follows after the left hook. Very simple drill. Remember, when you're doing your bag work, don't overthrow things. Make sure you constantly take little sequences out of your training, improve it, then put it back into the bigger picture. So Troy's just working on his left hook and what he would follow with after.
Here I have Troy and Matt. They're just going to be hitting different bag variations. They're going to do whatever they want. The whole thing is they're just going to use and set up their power hooks. I'm going to ask them to set them up and follow after. So you can see some of their favorite follow-ups after landing their power hooks. Mixing some knees and kicks. Aside from all your traditional tie pads, little mitts, um, to develop the left hook, this has been my favorite. The punch shield has been one of my favorite weapons because it forces you to focus on single power punching. And it's a big target where Matt's going to be able to really rip his punch through and I can give him some good um, technical advice as he does it. Good, load up your shoulder a little bit more. Quick hook, give me the quick to power. Boom, load it up. Good. Okay, we're just going to do some partner drilling. Troy and I are just going to show different variations. As I said, the quick hook and the more set up finish style hook. So we're going to throw the first more of that um, hook up top and then we're going to load up with that right shoulder load up or I'm going to call it my right feint. And again, you can set it up with the right hand. You can go here and then all of a sudden, boom, fake the right hand, which is going to anticipate them to block nicely. And then I can load up that nice shot to the body. This is more intermediate drilling, showing the difference between the quick hook and the power hook. One of the other variations in drills I like to throw is multiple hooks and a good way to do it is just to have very more uh, controlled style hooks. Not all your hooks have to be power hooks. So what I'm going to have, I'm going to have Matt hold his hand up, I'll do the drill first and we'll start uh, with different numbers. Matt can call any number from one to five and we're just going to throw those repetitive hooks. Two. So the key is getting that constant flow in the rotation. So watch how I'm, like I talked about in the intro, about stirring the pot and that'll help you throw multiple hooks. One, three, two, two, four. Okay, now I'm going to discuss some common mistakes you see when throwing your lead hook. The first one I'm going to discuss, and it's the most common, is when people throw the lead hook, this right hand drops. And a lot of times, someone's going to throw the counter hook at the same time. So it's very important that when you throw that lead hook that your hand is defending. And make sure, when you're throwing that hook, you want to make sure that shoulder really stays up. And one of the key ways of doing that is mistake number two. When people throw their hook, they keep their elbow down. And in order to get good weight in the punch, you have to have a nice horizontal line. And this way, when I talk about in this, in this episode, throwing the elbow behind the punch is going to give you more power. So boom, I'm thinking about throwing the weight. You got to think, if a target is here and my elbow is down, the force is coming this way and a lot of power gets leaked because the elbow and the weight of the elbow is not behind. Yes, there are variations to throw, but for your basic, clean lead hook, I want to see your elbow following the hand. This way, boom, you're protected by your shoulder and the weight goes here. Like I said, there's a lot of leaked power through here, so I want that elbow in line with the hand. One of the last mistakes I'm going to talk about is knuckle positioning when you're hitting. And it's very important, and a lot of old school martial artists did it, practice punching on a pad on the bag on um, bare knuckles. You don't have to over hit it where you damage your knuckles, but it's important to know that you are hitting with the proper knuckles when throwing the hook. So make sure when you're throwing this, you're learning to land the knuckles. When you see a lot of people will land um, with their mid knuckle here, and I've even seen people scrape their hand when throwing knuckles here. So one of the key things to get weight behind the, the hook is just kind of turn your wrist in. This will allow you to use those two knuckles really well. Bang. 
So again, practice on the wall pad, practice with no gloves, just at the end of your workout. Not only will it toughen your hands and the bones in your hand to make your punches stronger, it'll also make sure you're landing with the right part of the knuckle. And it makes a big difference um, in fighting with someone who knows how to be very precision like where they want to land. That shows advanced striking. So again, focus on which part of the knuckle you are landing with. There you have it, that's your lead hook, one of my favorite weapons to throw. Um, it's the shot that I get the most power with and it sets up my low kick beautifully. So if you watch a lot of my fights, my left hook, right low kick, my favorite weapon. Uh, but it's again, like I mentioned throughout this episode, the key is knowing the basic power hook and then knowing its variation. So as the series progresses, I'm gonna teach more of different variations to throw. But the key is you have more of your quick style hook and that loaded power style. Play around with both of those, practice those drills. Um, episode to discuss the right hook, which is a shot that you're not gonna throw as often, but when you do, it's gotta have good technique and good power behind it. Hope you're enjoying the episodes. Again, thank you for everybody for the positive thumb up comments, um, as well as all the questions you've been asking. Make sure you check out the question and answer segments as well for more learning on the bazooka kickboxing style.